Hello, it is Katie. This is Katie. And this is Christmas card number three in my card series. And I'm going to be using, we're going to make a little scene. I have three pages from my new Lawn Fawn Really Rainbow Christmas. So I'm using, this will be like the sky, this is going to be some snow, and then um, we'll be using this one as well. You will see. And then I have a five and a half by four and a quarter normal card base. And then also this piece, I'm going to, I'm going to set aside these papers for a second. Um, and then we'll also be using some dies. Um, I'm using, and I labeled this just for you. I had to Google what they were called and labeled it just for this video. So these are the Reverse Stitched Scalloped Rectangle Windows by Lawn Fawn. I didn't put that on there, but... Um, so I'm going to use the largest one, and it's going to put stitching and cut out the center so we've got a border. Um, so I'm going to run that through and then set it aside because I... Um, I have to kind of do the background behind it first. So that's gonna go on, oops, I just shook you, sorry. That's gonna go on kind of last, um, but I need to make sure everything is at the right height before I do that. Um, so I want to center that. I'm just gonna hold it down with the plate. I don't need to tape it. <coughs> Oops. Sent my papers flying. So I'm going to run this through twice just to make sure that it cuts it right. Okay. And then I can save this as extra cardstock. And I'll put this back in there. And I think for now, I can set that down. Okay. So I have the border. I just want to make sure there's no um, little pieces. So once we're done kind of building the with the background pattern paper, this is going to go on top like that. So I'll set that aside for now. And then I want the the blue sky background. I'm just going to have that cover the whole um, card front. So I'll trim this down to four and a quarter. And we'll save the rest of that by five and a half. Okay, and then I'll just put the adhesive right on the card base. That's fine, and just make sure it's covered. Okay, so I wanna make sure that the spine is uh, totally covered first, because I can't trim that edge since it's connected. So once you line up like the spine and one of the edges, it usually works just fine. I think my adhesive had a bump in there. So that is our sky background. We're going to add some snow, but eventually it'll have that border on it. And then I have, oh, you know what? Darn. I wanted to, I wonder if I can still do that. Probably not. I think that's too wide. Eh, that might work. I wanted to, uh, I also I don't have this in a magnet because I'm out of magnets, but I um, labeled this so you would know. Uh, Stitched Windy Backdrop by Lawn Fawn, and I wanted to uh, do that on that first, but this is only five and a half wide. I think I can send this through my big shot just fine and still stitch it because it's just putting like a stitching in it. So I think I'm going to try that. Oops. I have not cleaned my desk in case you are wondering why I keep running into stuff. Okay, so I'm going to try that and see if that works. <clears throat> I don't know why it wouldn't. 
So I'm just going to set that. I'm going to take this off. Set that right on there. And then send it through. I haven't used this die yet. I hope I don't shake you too much. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I've been wanting to. And so I was going to on this card. And then I forgot. So the in inside of the card isn't as cute anymore, but I can also put a... Um, Oh, I think it trimmed off a piece too. Oh, it cuts it out. No. Oh good, it didn't cut my card. Anyway, the border will cover that up. I'll show you what happened. So here, the die also cuts the edges. So it actually, um, I think in my head, I was thinking it didn't have the cutting edges. It would just put the indentation in it. So it has those. So it's going to cut out a piece of paper this size with the stitching in it. Um, that's good to know. But I, uh, it tried to cut the card, but it only made it through some of the blue paper, so it's fine. But the border is going to cover that up anyway, so I didn't ruin it. But I knew that that would look really cute for like a windy, snowy background, so I wanted that on there, so that worked out. But I would probably put another piece of cardstock. Um, maybe even just a thin piece, like a 65 pound piece of white to cover up this panel since the, the other half, other side of the die cut plate kind of uglied that up a little bit. So, so we have that piece and that will cover up the edges. And then I need, the snow is going to be on like the bottom little portion here. And I have mountains as well to put behind it. So in the Avery L snow caps dies, I've had these for a long time, probably if, at least a few years now, if not longer. Um, uh, these are the only snow cap, like mountain snow cap dies I have. I've seen one that's a little rounder. These are pointier, um, but I think these ones are really cute and they're the only ones I have. But this comes with it to do kind of like a, a scene piece. So I'm just going to just decide a height for that and then run that through um, the big shot. So I'll bring that back up and this will have to go this way and we'll just do about that high. I can kind of compare it to the card and there should be plenty of room. So I'll send that through. I normally like to send, well, I suppose I could have done that too. I like to send a long die like that through vertically and not horizontally. I feel like it cuts a little smoother. Um, and I probably could have done it that way because the paper is six by six anyway. So that, I usually recommend sending a die like that through that way. Um, it's easier for it to cut without having to just cut one long line all at once. So, okay, so now I've got this. I'm just gonna trim it on both ends. And then it's gonna hang off the sides anyway. So what I'm going to do for this one is put tape runner along the bottom up the side but I need to tuck these mountains in behind it so I'm gonna leave a little space up here to do that so I'm just gonna run along but about like half an inch down if you can see that so I've got room to hide the bottoms of the mountains because they are very pointy um, and then this should be fine and I'll still be trimming off some of the adhesive as well. So let me, we'll line this up on along the bottom. But then we've got a little bit of room to tuck the mountains in there and then we'll just cut off the sides here. Uh, 
Okay, so then we've got our snowy portion. Okay. And then I'll put that back. And the stamp set we're going to be using, I think I'm going to do the mountains first before I put the border on. Um, the stamp set, I had my husband pick a stamp set while I was at work uh, from my Christmas cart, and this is the one he chose. So I'm going to be using these guys right here. Uh, Santa will be in the sky, I think. I wonder how that will go. We're going to try and step Santa in the sky, even though I have spirals in the sky now. Um, and then I need a uh, sentiment. So I think I want to stamp the sentiment first. It's just going to be on the snowy area down here. So I just want to make sure I don't do it underneath the border. So let's see. Thinking of you. Wishing you. I think I want to do wishing you a magical Christmas. So... And I think I want to do this on the stamp platform. Um, right now I have my wreath builder stencil in there. So I think I will take it out because I don't want to use the, the big platform for this. So I'll just take that out momentarily. And then pin this down. I think this still works pretty well okay so you can just put it in the corner line it up how you want it on the card if you don't have a platform already I recommend them I keep finding more and more reasons that I need it but originally it was restamping something a few times so you have a better image or darker if it doesn't go well the first time. And um, layered stamps where you have to stamp, you know, different shades of ink to get like a full flower or something like that. Um, I wanna make sure this fits with the border included. Okay, so make sure that's straight. And I think that leaves plenty of room for the border. So I'm going to pick those up very carefully and then I'll just use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I can do this twice as well if I want a darker imprint. Um, I think uh, I'll do one more. I don't want to do too much. Just to show you how easy it is, you can get a bolder image there. Okay. Okay, so just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to clean these stamps and then put them away and then put my platform away. I'll be right back. Okay, so I forgot that I wanted to put Santa in this guy, so I stuck one of my mountain dies kind of in the middle and I set the border over it so I could get a good spot to put him. So I'm going to pick up that stamp, make sure the card is just pushed into the corner so if it does move, I know that it's just in the corner. And then we want to ink up Santa and his reindeer. Hoping this goes well. Not bad. I'll do one more go. Okay, that worked. So, Okay, now I'm going to clean that and then put this away. I think I'm good on the platform. Okay, so uh, I also stamped the little set of what I'm assuming are bears, this one here, and I cut them out with the die because I have the dies that go with the stamp set. And then I also, so my red paper, I am using to paper piece their scarf. So I just stamped them onto the red and then I'm going to cut out 
just around the scarf and glued that down here and then I need to color these guys as well so I'm going to just pause while I cut out the scarf and then I need to find some colors to color them in and then I'll show you that part I'll be right back okay I found some browns it took me a minute uh, that I want to color them with so on this guy I'm going to do E29 E37 and E35 which is kind of my go-to brown combo but I wanted them to be different so I wanted to um, come up with a whole separate brown combo which was harder than I thought it was going to be so that's fine I'm trying to only do the areas I think would be like shaded which I'm not very good at but we're gonna try and then I also have if this is your first video you are seeing I have a Copic blending tutorial it is super basic like basic basic like what I'm doing right now um, video it wasn't that long ago, so you can probably find it pretty easily. Um, just with some different uh, images and types of ways that you would blend. But my coloring is pretty basic. So I'll go down there. And then I'll just do the rest with E35. So filling in the white space, but also going back over all of it, even the darkest, and just blending it back out. Taking your lightest marker, going over the darkest points again also lightens that dark marker because the alcohol in the markers is kind of pulling that out again or diluting the color kind of. So that's what's helping it blend as well. So again, shading for me is something I need to work on where shadows should be coming from and things like that but it's a good enough blend for me this is just a uh, paper tree ink cardstock they're basic i think it's called stamper select or something like that i'm not sure that might be a stampin up thing but it's paper tree ink cardstock it's like 120 pounds i think and i just have tons of that and use it for everything and that's what I was using in the Copic video also. I totally forget to mention that whatsoever in the video, which is kind of important. Um, I have used Copic Express It, I think is what it's called, Express, like the letter X and then press Express It blending card. Um, for some reason on my Sandy Allnock chart, E33 looks darker than E34. I could just not be very good at knowing what the numbers mean. Um, but we'll sort it out in a minute. The Copic Express It blending card is what it's called. Um, it's kind of expensive and it blended okay, but um, I found that the paper got very like you can kind of see this gets a little grainy if you do it too much, but it happened a lot easier on the blending card, the cardstock. I just got a little pack of it. I think it was on Amazon. I didn't buy the large pack. I think it was like a 10, 10 sheet pack. So I still have some of it, but um, I don't really use it just because of the way the markers blended on it the first time. 
I colored a few images on it, so it wasn't just one, but it kept doing the same thing. So if you've used that and you've had a different, better experience, feel free to let me know. I'm going to, I can't find my tweezers. Wait, they're there. I'm going to, I cut down or cut out the scarf. So I'm just going to glue that down really quick for the paper piecing portion. Uh, this is the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. This dries clear, just like Glossy Accents. It just comes out white instead of clear cloudy like Glossy Accents does. And I usually kind of dab on another piece of paper before I stick something down because there's usually too much glue on it. So if you just dab off somewhere, then it's not so... Um, oozy when you're trying to put it down. So the black ink on the red looks a little grayer, but that's fine. Their little scarf is pretty cute. So I'm going to zoom out. And then um, I have... Um, this video is just getting a little long, so I'm going to cut the mountains out of gray and their snow caps out of white, and then I will come back. Um, I'll probably assemble them. I'll just glue the tops onto the gray mountain tops, and then um, I'll show you putting the mountains into the card. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've got these mountains here. I think I will use all of them. I'm just going to put some glue. I just won't put it on the very tip. That way I can hold that and kind of put that under the flap. So just need a little bit to stick them down. This is where I had imagined the bigger one when I was planting the Santa. So that one works there. And then a shorter one. I can go probably a little bit closer to the tip. I will just get glue on my fingers. And then this one here. It doesn't show too much of a bump under there. And then I'll do, I'm trying to think, either another tall one or a short one. I may have to trim this down a little bit. I think I like it going up, so I'm going to trim because it's just a little too round where I put the adhesive. And I can also make this a little bit shorter looking too. Let's do that. So, just trimmed it. Throw some adhesive on there. And then I'll just save the other little mountain for another card. And we'll tuck this guy down there. Okay. And that one's down just fine. And then these guys, I think I want to uh, pop them up on foam actually. I was going to just stick them down, but I'm going to do the border first. And the border should stick down with glue just fine. So I will grab that with some tweezers. And really just run a line along the edges. It doesn't have to be in the scallops. I just want to make sure it's secure. to grab it with the tweezers. Okay. All right. So line that up with the edge. And you can use, you know, stand up the card, use the table to align the bottom or the top. I know it's a little bit of white on white for the bottom, but we do have the, you know, the gray snowflakes. So hopefully it doesn't clash too much. Um, I'm sure a red border would look good too. I can even 
cut one out and set it on there and see if it looks good as well. Um, but I will get the foam adhesive on these guys. And I think what I'll do is I'll pause and I'll cut out a red border because it is a lot of white. And, um, and then I can show you what that looks like. And if it looks good, then we can just add it right on there. And then it will have a little dimension as well. And that's fine with me. And then I'll do one more extra piece down here. <clears throat> okay. Getting very close to my full video time. Okay, so I'm going to put them right there. They're not quite looking at Santa, but let's pretend that they are. So that is the card. I will cut a red border and I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut another one, although the um, since I have to cut to the size of the card and it wasn't, I think there was more room on the edge. So if I had it covering, it would be leaving this over here. So I'd have to cut a new one, but I just, I don't think I like the red border. So I think I'm going to leave it that. And I'm going to add Wink of Stella to their scarf to make it sparkly. So there's that. And that is it. Sorry this was so long, but thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.